All right, I'm John Lee Clare. I'm a graphic designer and a photographer from Charleston, South Carolina, and I own a photo booth business as well. And I am Mike Clock. I'm from Kalamazoo, Michigan. I run, I run a small design and illustration studio called Stuff Brain, uh, as well as a community building project called Kalamadoodle. And so, John, you and I first met through WMC Fest in, uh, where was that, Cleveland, right? And yeah. so uh, that was our first. Um, and I, sorry, I always know it's John Lee. Sometimes I say John for short, and I, I'm mean, sure you get it plenty all the time. The best of us. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I have a twin. I have like, okay, so I was in a wedding, not to go too off on the tangent, but I was in a wedding recently, and four of the five groomsmen were named John. So I'm around a lot of Johns most of the time. So that's yeah. just my natural. My natural thing. So I apologize in advance, but um, and also why I normally go by John Lee because two hundred <laughs> Johns in every of situation. <laughs> of course, just like a just like a Mike and a Michael, I'm well aware of that too. Oh, yeah. Um, but yeah, so we so we got to be there, and you know, I thought we really hit it off. And so when you you know we had this opportunity to chat a little bit more, we both had birthdays recently. Fun time to catch up, and I had some things I wanted to ask you, but I'd love for you to lead off if you'd like, if you have a question um, to start with. Yeah, definitely. Um, I was doing a little thinking on the questions earlier. Um, mm -hmm. I was going through your different websites and the Calamadoodle thing, just trying to get a little more history on yeah. you. Yeah. Um, I, I love your style that you've come up with now. It's all like your shirt is there. It's got the almost dripping look to a lot of it, like the cheese on some of the pizza stuff. <laughs> oh, cool. So my main question is, when did like, when did you notice that like, this is the style, this is what I love doing? Um, or when was like the first piece? Cause I mean, obviously you've been an artist for a long time kind of mm -hmm. developing that over years. But like, was there a time that you were like, okay, there's something to this right here? Yeah, that's actually a great question to lead off with, just because it is something that I struggled with for so long and I had no idea that I had a style developing. Like I was just doing the work, trying to pay the bills with and make design more of a career. And eventually uh, it kind of led to this one opportunity. I'd been working with a brewery and I still work with them today called One Well Brewing here in Kalamazoo. And they're kind of a client that's really given me some free reign and an opportunity to um, you know, spread my creative wings, uh, spread some design muscles, try out some different things, and really just kind of give me an opportunity to um, experiment and explore. And in addition to that, they had kind of said, hey, we're going to have this artist, featured artist wall. Uh, would you like the November, December slot? And right around that time, I was starting to kind of explore some character illustration and some design in that realm. Uh, I'd never really done much with characters before that, but um, kind of as a good collaboration between being a artist hosted in their brewery and the work I was doing for them already, I developed uh, and implemented this Bigfoot and Wizard character. And that was really my first opportunity to like create something that people weren't just looking at as a client. They were looking at it as mine. And that was really interesting to me. The feedback on the series was great. Granted, there was kind of a natural tie-in to the audience because uh, one well brewing if you if you obviously haven't been to it it's something that's very um, rustic very naturey like there's live wood uh, edging on almost all the tables like it's oh, cool. it's in a strip mall but the second you go in there you feel like you're in a different world right. and so using that as kind of an inspiration for the stuff that I did for the brewery um, art show was was just a um, a fun way for me to explore for myself, but also give their audience something they'd be familiar with. But that was, you know, that's a long-winded way of saying the feedback from that show is what really kind of showed me, hey, this is what people are recognizing as mine, and this is what stands out to them. And so I've and just it seems kind of like been trying to carry it. seems like you enjoy doing it too, I guess, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I grew yeah. up loving characters, you know, the Little Caesars pizza guy, the Bell Tire car, like, you know, there's just so many different ones that I could think of. Ronald McDonald, all these different things that like we associate with pop culture now. And uh, I just remember staring at pizza boxes and those type of things. And so to actually start to create some of those for myself has been so much fun. But Dude, total side topic. Do you remember the Noid from Domino's? The, no, I actually don't. The, I don't. In a N O I D, I think he was like a almost like a stuffed rabbit thing with these tall ears, like the most ridiculous character you've ever seen. Oh, I'm gonna have to go right. look into that. Yeah, um, dude, the Noid. There's a video, like a NES game called Yo Noid that I had years. I've played for that. Oh my god, I forgot about that dude. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's awesome. That's awesome. Well, if um, <laughs> if that answers the question, I'll kind of jump into the next one that I had for yeah. you here, and. Um, 
I was also trying to kind of catch up a little bit and figure out, you know, what you've been up to since we last had a chance to kind of hang out and talk in person. And it definitely looks like you've kind of gone through some transitions and some different things since we since we met. And, you know, I'd like to, you know, this, there's kind of like a little bit of the introductory, like, so which things are you currently doing? Which things aren't you doing? But I'd like to kind of wrap it more into like a greater conversation about how you're managing your time, you know, between work and life balance. You had mentioned something as, you know, uh, I saw your kind of welcome back with some of the employment stuff, um, mentioning a deep desire to be in airplane mode and how you kind of find time to disconnect and do those things while juggling all these other projects. So if you could kind of just speak to all of that with the idea of managing time. Definitely. That's funny because one of my questions was, how do you manage your time with sure. all your projects? Okay, well, I'll be happy to answer that one too. But that's definitely like one of the hardest things. Um, so currently, I guess my number one that I've been trying to build um, is a photo booth business. Okay. So I have a photo booth, a couple of ones that I've built and purchased that I go for weddings or parties. You know, you set it up, there's a big backdrop, there's big stupid props like <laughs> oh that one's like my my house is like littered with this crap seriously oh, that's awesome. <laughs> um and it just i've noticed doing that like people are so happy like when you're, they're just taking stupid pictures of themselves mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. over the years that's kind of what i've tried to follow is like what am i doing that is not only like making me happy making the money but like i've loved seeing people like have a good time and smile yeah yeah um so a lot of what i've started to focus in on is like wedding stuff so wedding videography wedding photography um, and the photo booth business for that. Um, I guess to backtrack with that some, I got into that completely randomly. Um, I had a photographer buddy who was like, hey, I have a friend who has some photo booths. He's a DJ and he needs somebody to run these things. You want to do it for a hundred bucks? It's like, hell yeah, a hundred bucks for like three <laughs> hours. Yeah, it's amazing. And so it started just progressing a little bit and I did it for about two years for them. And like, I was in the, I was storing their stuff at my house. I was interacting with the clients. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I was like, wow, this is definitely, you know, something that I love doing that I could potentially see a profit in. Sure. Um, and then I was working at a nice corporate cushy job, 401k back then, which seemed perfect. You know, I was making a, you know, a nice salary and doing this yeah. on the side. Yeah. And like you always hear, everybody says like, you're going to walk into work one day and they're going to say, we're getting rid of the marketing department. So oh, you don't need a job anymore. Like we don't yeah. have a place for you here. Mm -hmm. So at that moment I was like, all right, cool. And like, I wasn't scared. I wasn't just anything. At all. I was like, all right, it's time for the photo booth. Mm -hmm. So I went home, I went online to um, legal, one of those legal, was the legal zoom. It was legal, like, yeah I, need, sure. yeah, I need to make a business now. <laughs> uh -huh. And like from then on, I just dug everything into that. Um, and that's how I started building that up. Yeah, and so so kind of with that though, um, just kind of as a side question to it, like you know, a lot of the photo booth stuff is traveling to locations, right? And like right. being on site there. You mentioned having a couple different photo booths. Uh, I know you're even working on that like photo um, camper, right? Yeah. And so having all those different pieces, obviously, those are not only financial investments, but they are an investment in your time and trying to be those different places. Do you have? With three different booths, are there other people involved, or is it just kind of you can run it out to them and it self serves and it works on its own? You need to be there in person for those, or how do you kind of manage that part? Um, that's a really good question. Um, I've all the booths that I have, I've gotten them set up to where if they needed to be ran by themselves, they completely mm -hmm. could. I mean, okay. it's simple. You walk up, you touch the screen, and it goes. Oh, that's awesome. I don't like doing that quite as much. You know, obviously, you know, it could fall over. Somebody could fall into it. Mm -hmm. um, I've had people knock them over before. <laughs> so I, it's, yeah, there's a weird picture I'll tell you about later. <laughs> uh, that's so bad. Um, but no, I do have a few people that I have that are my go-tos. I can say, hey, David, I've got a double booking this weekend. Mm -hmm. Let's meet up. I get everything ready for him, and he just kind of goes there, sets up. Um, okay. And it's all about finding the right people for that, you know? Sure. Somebody that, that cares about it as much as I do. And that's why I don't have too many people that I try to like source out for because it's still mm -hmm. my reputation and it's so small that every Google review helps or hurts. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> of course. Of course. Um, but, but yeah, with that, like the time management's just staying up late and, you know, sleeping as much as I possibly can, which is yeah. not often, you know? Yeah. Um, not, a lot yeah. of late nights working. Sure. And I'm not sure if we're, you know, how many little side questions we're allowed here, but I'm going to throw another one in. Just like, yeah. do you find, you know, just as like a more personal thing than professional, like, you know, that's managing a lot of the professional aspect of it. Like, and you mentioned staying up late and doing some of that type of stuff. Have you found it like weighing on you at all? Like personally, like, hey, I'm not 
doing this thing with my friends or I'm not, you know, I'm missing maybe this family opportunity or whatever it is, or even just, I just want some me time to like fucking relax, you know, like, yeah. um, and just, is that, have you ever hit like a threshold on that or like, you feel like you're still navigating it pretty smoothly or where do you, where do you feel um, in that regard? Right now I'm in the, I'm totally burnt out of a lot of stuff mode right now, right. honestly. Um, for the last six months, I went so hard on that damn camper, like mm -hmm. 10 hour, 12 hour days, like even when I'm not, you know, not working my other job. Because I still yeah. work three days a week for a marketing company now. Also, okay. Okay. On top of the photo booth. Um, and I have a, a, a one client for freelance that has three restaurants. Mm -hmm. And then I just got another two clients on recently as well. Oh. So there's so much going on there. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I've just hit the point now where like I go out and look at the camper. I'm like, mm -hmm. I don't want to work on it right now, you know. It's, <laughs> so I'm in the rut right now. I'm trying to yeah. find my way back out of it. Okay. I'm, yeah. So it's definitely a you know up and down to it. Yeah. No, I mean, I, I hear you on that, but I will say the camper is beautiful. It's absolutely gorgeous. Thank you. And, the, and the color selection, superb. I love it. It's one of my favorites. Uh, yeah, it looks. When I was looking through your stuff, like yeah, it's very very <laughs> close to what. <laughs> yeah. It's almost like that Tiffany blue, which yep. I'm thinking about calling it the Tiffany. Oh, okay. ooh, that, I like that because it's I close to it, that. you know. Yeah, yeah, I have a friend named Tiffany who suggested it. So oh, cool. I was like, you know, it's actually the color of the booth too. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, like that's every time I look at it, I, I love it. But it's like the small little things that you're, uh, you know, how when you're with a pro, you're working on a project mm -hmm. and you get so involved with it, and then there's like those tiny little details. Yeah, yeah. Like, they're not gonna take that long to fix, but they're just things that are like, there's you notice them, nobody else notices them, but they're holding the rest of the project back. Sure, and sure. That's where I'm at right now is those little tiny things, like yeah. and an edge here and an edge there and a piece of paint here that I just just keeps mm -hmm. bothering me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah. yeah. Well, I think you said uh, since we're on the topic, you had mentioned one of your questions for me was probably some something similar about time. Yeah. Um. So how do you stay organized and maintain a social life with everything that you're doing? Because well, which is pretty much the same. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, and I think you know, different people have different answers for it. So I'll I'll be happy to answer that one. And you know, part of the answer is I kind of sometimes don't like. I realize I'm wearing this shirt today, but it's like I had forgotten about this until my calendar reminded me. You know, like I was like, oh crap, this is happening today in a couple hours. You know, thank you for <laughs> thank you for that calendar reminder. I'm so happy I set that. Um, so, I mean, especially in this kind of summertime, like, I don't know how much, you know, you've been able to keep up with me on my end, but like, I've really tried to use this summer for the first time in three years, um, to go back a little bit. I've been doing full-time freelance for three years in October. And so, you know, those first two and a half years were definitely just a grind and I would find pockets of time to celebrate and hang out with my friends and, you know, unplug a little bit. But even when I was hanging out with them, my brain was on the clock worried about the next bill I had to pay or the next client I needed to find. Like I'd never felt unplugged where like for the first time in maybe two and a half, almost three years, I've really tried to take a little bit of time for myself this summer, just for like that mental health and just like go to the lake, go out on a kayak, not bring my phone. Um, that's why when I said that, when I read the thing that said airplane mode from you, I was so intrigued by it. I was like airplane mode. I've only done that on airplanes. Like I've never, <laughs> I've never turned it on outside of that just to just give myself that permission to unplug. Um, but as far Honestly, as the other I really don't do it either. Okay. I've said that for that thing, but like, sure, I think sure. I've done it one time, you know? <laughs> well, Hey, it's something to aspire to, you know, it's a goal to goal to try to reach. But um, yeah. So, you know, on top of running my studio for, you know, full time for almost two and a half years, uh, I run that project called Calmadool, the drink and draw. So what it is, it's, you know, most cities have them or some version of them. And it's, it's really not a huge time commitment. I mean, there's the marketing on social media, there's the actual attending the events and helping set up the supplies. But I've been able to delegate a little bit of that to having a couple of volunteers come in. I still attend every event. I've never missed one. We do them again monthly. Um, but if I needed to, if I really couldn't make one, I do have some people in place that would do an awesome job at stepping in and filling in for me. I just still like to kind of be there and it's a chance to connect with them. It's a chance to connect with our community. Um, so I try to, and it's a chance for me just to kind of be like, look at this whole thing you and some friends built, you know, it's, uh, it's become, it's become kind of its own community where uh, we don't have to work as hard on the marketing side. So that's freed up some time. The people that know it and love it kind of help push and spread the word out for us now. So I don't have to be on social media every day, updating Instagram, updating Facebook, which I was in the beginning to build the audience. And that was just a huge time suck because it was for a project that 
is really about giving back and not about making money. So how do you dedicate all that extra time towards something that's not going to bring any value back? But, and I say value in the sense of like financial value, um, it, the relationships, the people I've met, the connections that I've seen in the community uh, speak for their, themselves. And, you know, they mean more to me than I can put the money price tag on. So, um, but yeah, just kind of, you know, like I mentioned, trying to balance some of my personal life, throw that in there for a change. Um, I definitely need to be better kind of on the client side of stuff. I've tried to um, keep projects to like a tight schedule and like use different apps to control my time and be like, I'm only going to spend three hours on this logo. I never only spend three hours on the logo, yeah, you know, yeah. even if the budget doesn't justify it, I'm going to want to tweak it until I feel really good about it or until, you know, I at least feel like I can get it out the door and put my name behind it. You hate right. turning in work to somebody that you never want to show to the world and you feel like you're doing them a disservice too. But there are times that I've had clients kind of demand too much of my time, especially for what the budget entails and what they asked for in the beginning, you know, the scope of work they try to change or edit on the fly. And I have to kind of be smart and tell myself like, and I'm getting better at it. I'm not, you know, still not very good at it, but I have to be smart and just be like, come on now, Tim, or whatever the name is, right. you know, like, we, we talked about this. We're not going past three rounds or whatever the case. And it's, it's um, so hard sometimes. playing bad cop is not a fun thing to do. You want to, you, I always wish I had a partner to help manage this workload and, uh, and to kind of be able to be the bad cop while I'm sitting there designing and just trying to flesh out as many ideas as possible and not wear every hat. But, you know, we chose this for ourselves. <laughs> oh my. I'm so, so bad about that bad cop too. With like yeah. the photo booth thing with me is people are trying to, well, what about five hours or six hours? Oh, sure. And, Part of you doesn't want to lose the business, so you're like, yeah, I'll take the extra time or I'll do this. Yeah. But it's at the yep. same time, it's like, do you really want that client if they're still going to be, you know, trying to get more out of you than, you know, you already agreed to? Oh, That's yeah. a hard struggle right there sometimes. Yeah. And there's a, certainly those projects that you're just passionate about, too, that you want to pour more into. Like, there's this guy oh, yeah. that's, you know, he's, he's, um, he was actually uh, working on, some like motivational speaking and like, you know, community outreach type of stuff. And he just wanted to kind of put a face and a recognizable image to his message. And I was like, man, I really believe in what you're saying. We had like a long consultation conversation that probably could have ate up half the budget and what he ended up trying to pay me for the project. <laughs> but it was an interesting conversation. Uh, he seemed very passionate and caring about what he was doing. I felt like I had a lot of things in common with what he was trying to preach. And, uh, and I was just like, yeah, I want to be a part of this. And, you know, what I would normally say is like a day's worth of work has been, you know, stretching into weeks even. And I'm just like, right. I want to set him up for success. So do I bite the bullet on this one or what? You know, and uh, not having anybody to really bounce that opinion off of and me making that decision internally is not always a good thing. But it's, it's what I've been doing so far. Um, it seems so like that's what people see though they see that personality yeah. and you can tell that you care about your work and you know sure. that really shows what you do yeah i mean i try to there's times i've been jaded by certain projects but um you try to keep those as few and far between as possible um this would actually be a really good segue is it my turn to ask you a question now is that are we back uh, on that yeah because yeah because we took the yeah. question okay you know, yeah. yeah yep okay so kind of in that sense i just kind of finished up saying like um you know being that kind of team of one and trying to um, make some of those tough choices and calls on your own. Obviously, we've both said, hey, it's hard to do. But, like, where do you look? Do you have a mentor? Do you have, um, at this age, we're both what? I'm, I just turned 30. You just had a birthday. Was it, when did, how old I turned did you? 32. Okay. So we're in that same age where we've been doing some of this stuff for a little while, but we aren't, like, old guard. We aren't, like, top industry people that have been around. Do you mentor other people? Do you have a mentor yourself? Like, where, Or do you just kind of have, like, people of the same – um, age group or maybe experience level that you're kind of working with to, to get any type of feedback when you, when you look for it? Um, that's a really good question. Um, right now, like I'm going off of a lot of what I've learned in the past versus mm -hmm. people that I'm actually mentoring with right now. Okay. Um, when I was in, right when I was in college and right out of there, I interned and worked for a, a video production company here in Charleston. Mm -hmm. Um, and so with them, I was right under like the head guy, the boss, and so he took me into all of his meetings and I kind of got to see all of like, I wasn't like, right, I was kind of interning with him, but I got to see all of the ways that he would negotiate with people, the ways that he would talk to clients. 
um, the ways that he would kind of do his billing and try to all of his negotiating strategies. Mm -hmm. um, and he even actually worked with a business coach that taught some of those like professional guru types. The Ooh. well, if you have personality type this, then you can take this personality. And I did all kinds of studies of those with him. He was kind of okay. crazy about that stuff. Mm -hmm. And so I try to take everything with a grain of salt that he said, of course. Sure. But I've just tried to kind of mold that together with a lot of honestly a lot of YouTube. You know, people that really? I've watched on there, the Casey Neistats and people like that, oh, okay. that yeah. are big into video work and are actually, you know, are successful at what they do. Mm -hmm. Just trying to follow their, maybe not their advice completely, but just kind of seeing how they do things and what works for them and how they change based on what's coming at them. Sure. Well, you said, you said um, their advice. And I know you said maybe advice isn't like the right word, but do the, do some of those platforms, do some of those people like a, actually offer literal advice? Like, hey, if you're looking to get into this or is it more just an observing of what their habits are and what they're doing type of thing? I've done a few. I've looked at a few of the ones that are actual advice from them. Mm -hmm. um, but sometimes it doesn't always in my case, because I feel like what my case is kind of specific to me because mm -hmm. of how I'm, you know, I'm working three days a week for a marketing company. So and then I do have the freelance clients, but the work that I do freelance is more of the layout design style of doing okay. ad design versus the illustration and logo part of it, mm -hmm. which I love doing that freelance, but that's not what I'm great at. So that's not what pays my bills. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, I mean, right now I'm just kind of going with the flow with that, but trying to pretty much just follow the examples that others set versus what they tell me to do. Okay. Because a lot of times you can tell people to do things, but you can be full of shit when you do it. Yeah, as well. Yeah. You know what I mean? I don't oh, know if I can say sure. shit. <laughs> I don't know. We'll go for Sorry, it. I see it. <laughs> uh, yeah, I hear you on that. Um, um, oh, and then the other part, kind of part of that, was like, do you do you have people reaching out to you now, like asking, "Hey, how did you get started in this?" Or people just kind of reaching out to you at all, as far as either design, photography, video. Um, I remember even just watching you go around and you know doing the stuff that you were doing with WMC. Like, I was just like, "How do I?" How do I get into a, a video? Like, what's that equipment that he has? You know, like you were able to do right. it pretty portably. Like, you were able to, you know, mix. You worked really hard, but you were also able to join us for a couple lunches, have some fun. And I was like, okay, so how much work does this take to really do? Not trying right. to shortchange the amount of work. No, but of like, course, yeah. But I'm sure people that are more invested in it have those questions, and they probably reach out to you about it. Or, or do you not see that as much? Actually, with the video stuff, I do um, more so than any of the other stuff I've done. Um, okay. Because I went to like a community co or tried a technical college here, mm -hmm. and so I've had a few younger kids that I was friends with back then. Because I went back when I was in my mid twenties. Okay. And so uh, I say the kids that were like eighteen and nineteen <laughs> that I became yeah. good friends with uh -huh. that are now you know they're mid twenties and they're getting into like one's working at a news station, one's like starting to film rap videos, and he's getting amazing. Mm. And for years now, they've kind of reached out to me and. I don't know about you. I'm sure people have reached out to you as well, but like that is such a good feeling. Just when somebody reaches out, it's kind of like a, all right, well, this is, you know, like maybe I'm doing something right that people are actually interested in what I'm doing and how I'm doing it. Mm -hmm. So that's it's not a, like I can teach you, but it's. Yeah. You know. Well, that's such a good way to put it. I, I definitely have had that, that um, sense of like, Hey, people feel like I have my, my stuff together, you know, enough to ask me the question course most days imposter syndrome I think is real in most of us like <laughs> I don't I don't feel like I have it so it's a little flattering to be um, for a lack of a better terms like kind of put on that pedestal like hey you're figuring yeah. your stuff out you know even if you feel like your world's a mess um, but I also try to like I don't know I also find that like a little uh, intimidating like a little burdensome, burdensome like am I using social media honestly like am I you know am I being Am I being too phony and sh only sharing enough good and not showing like the realities of like the stress behind losing a client or any of that type of stuff too? Because a lot of that stuff doesn't always make good Instagram posts or stories, you know, right. like there's, there's a balance to that that I'm constantly trying to keep in mind when people reach out to me and act like you have it figured out. It's like, man, I don't know. You can come hang out for a day. You might think otherwise, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, it's uh it's interesting being in the age that I think we're in right now because, yeah, we've you know, been doing a lot of this stuff for years, but we still look up to these people that are just like next level and aspiring to get up to that and going, how, well, how do I get up there? Can I just reach out to you now? I'm sure you're getting flooded not only by people our age, but by those 18-year-olds that are right. also watching. You know, like they're getting hit up by even more people now than probably ever before. So, yeah, mentorship's always been a struggle for me to find it. Um, 
I've just kind of had some local people that have not necessarily even taken me under their wing, but just offered advice almost when they can, ten, can tell that I need it. Like maybe I do post something honest or insincere online and then even a simple, hey, keep your head up or let's go grab some coffee. Um, even if we don't dive too deep into like, all right, how do I solve this problem? Just their support and being like, I watch, I see you. I can tell what you're, you're trying to do something. You seem passionate, like keep at it. That stuff goes a long way too. Cause I think oh, like so you were hard. saying, I think like you were saying, a lot of it's just figuring it out for yourself and trying to trying to figure it out. So, um, so my, le oh. my Alexa just went off, or my Echo just went off. I was like, oh, okay. Who, I was, right who are these people? I haven't invested any of those yet. I, yeah, the, <laughs> the random person in the room that sees all knows all. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, all right. Well, I think that was my kind of question on mentorship. Did you have uh, another one here? I do have a question. Um, okay. So you've recently moved into a new a studio, it seems yes. like, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, look, it looks fantastic in there, by the way, from, oh, at least from this you. angle. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, I think there's some trash over on this side that's behind this uh, shelf, so I tried to hide that as well as I could. <laughs> we'll see. This side's like a giant garbage can. And like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so look, last year, the end of last year, I ended up trying to rent out a small office space to use. Mm -hmm. But I honestly, I never went there. I went six months to this place and I probably went there five or six times total. Um, so my big question, I ended up getting out of it last month finally. Okay. So my question is like, when did you know to take that step? Um, how are you dealing with like the added cost of something? I assumed that you were working out of somewhere before, but it wasn't a whole, you know, a whole shop. Yeah. Um, have yeah. you noticed the increase in business? Have you noticed like a more energy when you walk in? You're like, I'm in my studio now, like this is my spot. Like, I'm sure that's a great feeling. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's, it's mixed. I'll try to hit the different emotions that I kind of go through with this space. Um, so when I first got a studio space, I'd kind of fallen backwards into it because I was working full time at a private college doing like their publication stuff, making a salary, making a 401k, like had that extra, you know, had that comfort and some extra income to as a single guy with no kids, no cats, no dogs, I had extra money to spare on a, you know, a hobby of mine, which I considered screen printing. And always kind of thought I'd love to turn this into some type of business, but had no real immediate plans to do it. Um, I didn't spend like any time in there. I spent a lot of extra money trying to build it out to my liking and try to make it like as efficient as possible. And instead of just getting my hands dirty and creating in the most bare bones situation, so after a while, spending that extra money on it really kind of made me like frustrated with the space. I'd go in there and be like, I've spent all this money and, I, and it still doesn't feel right. What am I doing? And so I actually stopped kind of going to it on top of that. I was still working a full-time job. I was doing design stuff that I didn't need to be in that space to do. I really got that physical space for the screen printing aspect of it. Because right. um, I, I mean, the first time I printed it, I just fell in love with it. I didn't necessarily see that as like, my full-time job, like otherwise I'd go work at a screen print shop or do something like that. But I just love creating, getting off the computer, doing something with my hands. Um, so I've kind of jumped around inside this one building. I jumped around to a couple different studios. I went from a big one to a smaller one that came with its own challenges. That one, um, I just felt very isolated. It was in the center of the building, no windows. I felt I, I can get really bad, like seasonal depression and stuff. So I felt like there was days where I was literally not seeing the sun at all. And I was just like, man, I have to force myself to go for a walk, like just so I can get outside in the cold and in the winter to see the sun a little bit. What am I doing to myself? And so this opportunity for this space kind of came around um, by one of the people that was a former tenant in that previous building. They go, we made the move over to this complex. We think you'd love it. There might be a space that's a good fit for you. Um, checked it out. It was really bare bones. It needed a lot of work, but the guy was willing to put the work in to get me in there. And I jumped at it. I was like, I don't want to lose this space. It has, you know, we were talking about the lighting earlier. You can see it kind of hitting the side of me. Like it has big windows that give me a sense of time of day. Let me know, hey, it's starting to get dark. Maybe I can go work at home if I need to finish some stuff. Um, it does have the square footage for me to do some of the screen printing and production, even though I haven't quite gotten everything quite set up yet. I had just got the last piece of that puzzle um, purchased recently. Um, but it, now it does feel kind of refreshing. Like I come in here again, I can see the sun. I can see where my production space is, which it's set up in a way where I can just walk in and kind of say, all right, I can't touch the screen printing stuff today, but I don't have to like 
or if I do want to print, I don't have to like move the computer to have enough room to print. Like, you know, like right. there's enough space to kind of spread out. And so that does feel good. Um, always justifying the cost though, that's tough. I always have to tell people, cause I have, you know, some people reach out from larger cities and I'm not sure what the cost of living in there is. I'm in Kalamazoo, Michigan, where it's in incredibly affordable to do stuff here. Um, you know, between what I pay in rent and what I pay for the studio, like my home, you know, my apartment home rent, um, it's, it's definitely a cost. Like it's a huge, you know, weight on my shoulders, but I feel like I'd be, even if I was working a full-time job, I'd be trying to find a way to have this place anyway as a hobby still. So to kind of use it as like my actual workspace, I'm like, this is just an expensive hobby, you know, that you're trying to turn into a job dummy. Like, so go do something with it. Um, but that's a good way to put it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's like, I would probably be spending the money anyway, even if I was working a full-time job, I just wouldn't have as much time to spend in here. Um, just cause I enjoy the act of screen printing and the idea of creating a space where other people can come work and do a collaboration. I've had like one little, like one little apprenticeship. It was kind of informal, but I was able to teach him how to screen print. Um, I had one of the, I had a college student come in and she kind of, she was a photography person. So she kind of documented the process and helped, I'd help teach her about social media. Um, oh, wow. And then just like the opportunity to maybe host workshops or like, you know, just find unique little small events to kind of do in a space like this. I never got it with the sole purpose of me being the only one in here. Life's just kind of been that way. I've always hoped like maybe I'll find a business partner or maybe I'll find somebody else that wants to um, learn how to screen print and they fall in love with it and then they want to share the space or um, I really kind of see it as a, you know, a workshop for other people than myself and as much as I can to get other people in here. I think that'd be cool. Um, but right now it's kind of like a, if you build it, they will come philosophy for me, which comes yeah. with its financial woes and struggles. But again, that's just kind of where I speak to, I wouldn't be able to do this in Detroit or Chicago or, you know, like any other major right. city. Kalamazoo's offered me the ability to do that. So how many square feet are you working with in there? Uh, this is about, there's kind of like this little dart, like it was an old locker room for what the, you know, for what this like foundry type building used to be. And so there's like actually like this like carved in area that was like the old shower room. And so if you include that, that's like where my dark room is now. So it kind of oh, works cool. in washout area. So it works out. Yeah. Really oh, well. perfect. Yeah. Uh, the drainage was already there. I'm on the second floor with drainage. Not always the easiest thing to find, especially around here. And, um, and so it's about, I think 800 square feet. So yeah, that's a good size for yeah. 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 And again, I mean, the equipment fills up fast. I've found myself like, trying to remind myself not to be a pack rat, like just cause I have the room, don't acquire more things to fill it. Like let it, right. you know, I do a spring and a fall cleaning just to try to get rid of as much <laughs> stuff as I can. Um, but yeah, it's a significant amount. But again, that my thought was always like, Hey, the screen printing stuff's going to take up a certain physical space. Yes. I could oh, yeah. design at home, but having that disconnect from work and life at home is something I'm trying to aspire to a little bit more. And then the idea of getting other people in here where they feel like it's a creative hub, that would be the ideal scenario. So, yeah. Man, that's so hard working from home and doing that the separation right there. Like, oh, yeah. I feel so guilty when I play video games. And I, oh, <laughs> I feel I feel it in my stomach, man. I'm like, all right, I'm having a creative block. Let me go eat some food real quick. Maybe, the, and then, ooh, another creative block. Those Cheetos look really good. You know, like whatever it is, you just, yeah. you find excuses to, to stop working a little bit. And uh, I really feel like trying to put myself in this workspace and I can't just reach for something. I can't just go do my laundry and get distracted. Like, I feel like it gives me a better sense of working hours. And that's part of that time management we were talking about earlier. Right, for so, sure. Yeah. Um, uh, so do you have another question? I think that's what I we're do, at, right? I do, I do. Yeah, so this one was kind of like, um, it's, it's kind of like your biggest takeaways. Uh, I remember, I forget exactly when it happened, but I remember following very closely when it did. You had that experience to go out west and do the, uh, I don't want to speak to it in a, like incorrectly, so if you can first recap like what it was and what it turned into and like just what were your biggest takeaways, um, basically to you know kind of frame it a little bit more. It seemed like you got to work with a celebrity. You got to be a part of, be a part of this opportunity to like really put your name in front of a lot of people and overall, did you fi feel like that was like a good experience, a bad experience? Like, did you learn something significant, something really positive come out of it? Like, how did that feel for you just as a whole? Because not everybody gets that opportunity. Right. And that's a, that's a really good question. Me and Heather were actually talking about this earlier. Oh, cool. Um, especially when it comes to 
what I've learned and from that. So I guess what you're to just kind of show say what you're talking about. Um, my photo booth business won a contest last year uh, through Wix.com, which is the website platform. Mm-hmm. Um, so they flew me out west and hang or to meet and hang out with Zoe Deschanel mm-hmm. of Fox's New Girl, which nice. I, I, I don't think I'm contract to say that, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, oh. they flew me out there to. to yeah. <laughs> So they flew me out there to do um, a commercial for with her to promote the, their new booking service through Wix. Mm-hmm. So it, to me, as like a my first year in business, like this is this is gonna make my business blow up, right? right. In my head, you know, going out there like I'm gonna be set, like they're gonna do this, like they're gonna promote my business so well, they're gonna link to my website, blah blah blah. It's gonna be amazing. And the experience, the experience was it was fantastic. I got to go out there. Um, we went to a pug shelter, like the mini pug dogs, mm-hmm. and so mm-hmm. there was just a bunch of like really, not sick, but you know, sick and do- three legged pugs, one eyed pugs, which is so sad. They were the cutest damn things I've ever seen in my life. Though. Like, <laughs> I got to lay on a floor and like had twenty pugs like crawl over me, <laughs> <No>. <laughs> which like you can't really ask for a better experience. With and no. with Zoe Deschanel, like for, yeah. she was good, but these pugs. <laughs> right, right, right. Um, and so that I mean that was a great experience meeting her and actually going and filming this. And mm-hmm. when the campaign launched with it, which I thought was going to be a full campaign, kind of promoting my business and promoting with her. All that really came out of it was a 30 second Instagram size square that said tag a pug lover. Oh. And it was Zoe Deschanel playing with pugs. <clears throat> and then me in the background messing with the photo booth. And it mm-hmm. just said, Zoe hired John Lee from Big Shot Photo Booth. Tag a pug lover. And like that's the only thing that came from it. Mm-hmm. I was only able to use four or five photos of the actual ones that we took of her. So even the photos like that were taken with the photo booth, I had to right. give those to Wix. They had to send them to her people and they had to say, all right, well, we don't want any of these because she doesn't look the way we want. Oh. And I think I ended up having three photos from the photo booth and a couple like off stage photo shoots from their photographer, mm-hmm. but it didn't have anything to do with my business. Like I don't take pictures of pugs. <laughs> right. Like, you know what I mean? Like a, yeah. a, take a picture of a dog is the last thing you think of with the photo booth. And sure. they didn't want to use my backdrops and we didn't get to use my props because it's all animals. Mm-hmm. And so I went to a, it's called the big fake wedding. It's like a big fake wedding that they put on for vendors here in Charleston every year. And I had like my video playing from Wix, you know, just on loop at the thing. And I had a guy come up and he goes, why are you promoting Wix over here? And that to me was just like, it's a video of me at my <laughs> event. And the guy doesn't even know that I'm promoting myself in it. Like, yeah. So my lesson was, I either should have maybe try to push it a little harder myself instead of expecting them to do a lot more of that, of course. Mm -hmm. Um, But at the same time, I didn't get anything to use to really promote it with. So I guess it's kind of hard to see my expectations on what's going to happen and not settling, you know, like not going slower on what I'm doing because of that. You need Mm -hmm. to keep building it and keep building it and not let that kind of slow you down because you think that you're on the brink of something. Yeah. Because like I went all this way and then it was just like, all right, like nothing happened at it. Like I, didn't, I maybe got some more business, but I haven't really seen it reflect, honestly. Like I looked at the metrics and like it didn't really go up. It okay. was progressing the same as it already was. Um, you know, it's interesting that the pressure that the pressure you can put on yourself to have one project l- feel like it's going to lead to everything or at least the next big thing like. There's been a few clients that were, you know, we were talking about time management and putting extra effort into stuff earlier. And, you know, like this, granted, they flew you out there and stuff, but that's still a big chunk of your time. That's uh, either time off from the job if you were back there or it's just time away from doing whatever else you want to do with your life in hopes of this leading to something more. And, oh, man, (laughs) I feel for you on that just because there are there have been so many times where I'm like, all right, here we go. This is yep. going to change everything. And then you, you put it out to the best of your ability, or at least with what you're given, you know, and, uh, and then you sit there and go, oh, well, <laughs> I guess I'll go into the office tomorrow and hope I can reach out to somebody and get some new business. You know, it's not coming to yeah. me right away. So Exactly. Uh, yeah, I, I hear you on that. But overall, 
I mean, yeah, you said curb your expecta- curb your expectations, which I think is awesome. But like, would you do it again? Type of thing. Is it? Oh my like, god. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Outside of the pl- if yeah. if it's not pugs, if it's not pugs, would you still do it again? And I, of course, I would do it again. <laughs> like, yeah. so I got out there. I was there for three days. I got pampered. I got the whole <laughs> staff from Wix. They flew in from Tel Aviv, Israel, for me. Oh wow. They, okay. So they took me around to all these spots in LA, and you know, bought me clothes, and had you know, made me over and everything. And oh, so it was a it was a fun experience. Like yeah, yeah. South Carolina going to the big city. <laughs> <laughs> Put me up in a hotel in Hollywood, you know, like Yeah. Oh, that's cool. It was, it was an absolute blast, you know, okay. meeting new people out there. And yeah. I've been there a couple of times, so okay. it was fun going back and you know, just from that perspective, you know. Yeah, yeah. I guess let me ask you just one little follow up with that. Um you had said uh, oh, what was the commitment? What did you have to do up front, like as far as time, content? submissions like how rigorous was the you know they found you or how did that part come about to even be involved like oh the contest much- yeah yeah oh man okay um so the contest was let zoe de chanel book your business mm-hmm. i just i got they sent out an email to every wix user okay and so it's open to anyone that has all you have to do is basically submit a form <clears throat> like a little like a two paragraph statement about why you would be good for zoe to book you um I had gotten the email before, and then honestly, I was out drinking one night, and it was like eleven o'clock at night, and I got home, and I was like, I got another email. It's like contest ends in an hour. I was mm. like, let me see what happens. And so I wrote my little paragraph about you know how why I started the business, and you know, because I did start the business with great the best intentions, other than the um just getting laid off. Like I saw that they, I was working for other people doing it, and you know, it was a very big disconnect between the management of the booths and the people and. I wanted to make it all cohesive and fun for everyone. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I wrote a little statement about that. And I guess what happened, the way the process from there is, they were looking for something that would be better on camera than just somebody that, I don't know, something that would be more basic to do, I guess, like a somebody that had a lawn care service or somebody that did hair, something that would probably be good for social media. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So they went, they brought it down from like the couple thousand submissions down to 10 total. And submitted those 10 to Zoe as far as what she needs to pick from. Mm-hmm. So they didn't send Zoe Day Chanel like 10,000. Right. She's like, I want this one. Um, it was more of a filtering process, of course. Yeah. yeah. But it's. But then she, sorry, go ahead. No, say, but then she did pick me out of the 10. So okay. Well, that's great. I was, yeah, I was definitely, I'm, I'm kind of happy to hear that, um, you know, because. If you were to look at the end metrics and what you got out of it, again, fun experience, take all that stuff and put it aside. But like, I'm glad to hear you didn't have to like custom shoot this whole elaborate thing or, you know, you didn't have to like yeah. really like the submission itself was reasonable because so many times I feel like we're asked to do so much to potentially receive something for nothing in just hopes of exposure or that opportunity or whatever. And so I'm glad you didn't have to like break your back to to make it happen and get that opportunity. So yeah, I, I would have been a little myth, I think, if I had like shot this like, you know, went out of my way and did a huge photo shoot and spent mm. all kinds of money on it. Right, uh, right. But no, it was pretty much like literally zero effort on my part. For cool. Them. Cool. I had That's to, like good. some shooting of myself, like shooting of myself, like the filming of myself beforehand, mm-hmm. like, shooting mm-hmm. the video while I was there. Um which that kind of did. I, so I brought all my camera equipment. You know, you saw my rig before. And yeah, I yeah. Like getting ready to go, setting everything up, like even the process of me setting the booth up and tearing it down so they could use for B roll. Mm-hmm. So I mean, you know, like every YouTube vlogger does. Like, <laughs> I'm on the plane. Like, check out me going through baggage. Like, yeah. look like an asshole the whole time. And they didn't use any of that footage. <laughs> so I'm like, yeah, you'll see this later on the Zoe Edition No video. Oh, I get so scared. Now. Yeah. yeah. I get so scared to hype and market something because you never know what's going to happen. And yeah, I feel you on that. Well, I know that was under NDA, so I couldn't do too much. (laughs) There you go. (laughs) Um, Yeah. So I think you probably have one more for me and I know we're probably running a little long, but I guess I, we haven't heard her chime in yet. So keep going. Yeah, Wait, I think we did all three, didn't we? Oh, did we? Did you, did you give me a third or wait, we did. Oh, well the second one was kind of how, um, Oh, okay. Cool. But I can I have it. I have a third one if we have time for it. I mean, or I have another one if we have time for it. Yeah, sure. I mean, I forget exactly um, where we're at, but let's go for it if unless yeah. we hear otherwise. So, so I know you do a lot of your studio itself does a lot of stuff. You do screen printing, you do branding, you do logo design, mm-hmm. websites, social media. What's something that you're not good at 
that you want to get better at or that you don't think you're good. You know what I mean? Like yeah, we all yeah. have like, you know, oh, yeah, something yeah. that you feel like you could improve on, even if it's not something that you do now, even right. if it's something else. Well, um, I guess, yeah, I'm probably not going to answer that. I'll try to try to get around to the answer that you're probably looking for. But like, yeah, originally, like when it, the first thing that is like, I love to write and I hear I'm a good writer, but I just don't put it into practice. So like, that's something I wish I was doing. I could be using that to build up my blog on my website, which could lead to new business. Like, you know, like there's, there's personal reasons to want to write. And then there's professional reasons to want to write and like have an opinion on something and have a reason for people to come back to my website and check stuff out. But just the act of allowing myself permission to do some things, I guess is what I say, what I don't think I'm good at. Like, I don't do a good job of being like, Mike, just go for it. I always want to like, sketch it out, build out the framework for it, make sure it's perfect and ready to go before I start doing it. And then I never end up doing it because bills got to get paid or something. You know, it's a, right. it's a long-term thing, but I'm trying to work on shorter term solutions and, you know, get the projects done that, um, you know, the squeaky wheels that need the grease type of situation. So, um, so that's kind of my quick answer. The first thing that comes to mind, but as far as stuff that I wish, um, I'd really like to do just more like collage and like almost just different media. Like I do a lot, I've fallen kind of into this area that I really enjoy that's illustration based. Like I'm, you know, it's branding, but it's a character or it's, um, you know, a lot of that, stuff, which I really enjoy doing, but I definitely feel like I'm not using as much graphic design sense as anymore. Like I feel like I'm doing illustration and then kind of designing text and stuff around it versus I'm going to do a punk flyer that's collaging, you know, 30 things together and just put, ripping out magazines and doing more analog stuff. Like I'll do the screen printing. But I can't tell you the last time I went to like use a photocopier and create something more raw and like distressed and natural that way, where it's not necessarily my hands doing the creation of the artwork. It's just piecing it together. That type of stuff seems fun and just kind of different, but in the same realm, like painting. Uh, I used to, like I've taken a couple painting classes. I really enjoy the idea of doing acrylic paintings, taking some of the stuff that I illustrate and blowing it up and you know, spending more time with it, more time that I'm not looking at a screen. I'm not on my iPhone, like I'm staring at this canvas with these analog tools. Um, using that stuff more, I think would be really um, soothing. And so I feel like I should spend more time with it. Yeah, anytime when you, I, I feel like when you're working hands on with something, like it's mm -hmm. so much more like relaxing and soothing oh, yeah. than like yeah. sitting there like this versus like, you know, the texture of something that you're working with. And, yeah. And I was even talking to somebody about this recently where I invested like in an iPad because I know that's kind of where a lot, like, I'm not impressed with the new MacBook Pro. So I figured if I'm going to take something on the road with me, I'm going to get an iPad, start to learn how to uh, illustrate on that. Um, and I know I can go in and adjust the settings. I haven't had it very long. But like I still have the settings up where I'm drawing and all of a sudden a text message comes down and interrupts me drawing. <laughs> I'm like, man, just give me a sheet of paper and a clipboard. That won't happen. Like, you know, like right. unplugging as much as possible in my and letting my creative process really just kind of like flourish and be on its own a little bit undistracted. Um, that's something I really just want to work on. I think doing more analog things like the photocopies and the um, painting would get me there. How are you liking doing the um, or trying to switch over to the iPad? Is that, uh, is that, I mean, is that I have, similar to drawing on paper at all. It's tough. It's tough for me. Um, the text. I've heard people say you can get like filters or screens that like screen protectors that have a paper grit to them. I bought one that I thought had that. I don't feel like it does. So uh, my hand just kind of moves a little too quick on it. And I've used to draw with like you know I still I still have like a small Cintiq, mm -hmm. and. I feel like that feels much more responsive to my hand where you can kind of feel the thing click in a little bit as you're pressing down on it versus the iPad, the iPencil or whatever they call it, Apple yeah. Pencil. And that's just solid. It's really the pressure on the screen. And I feel like I'm just going to like push through it, you know, to get the density of the line weight that I want. So it's, it's been, it's been a struggle, but I know that's kind of the way things are probably going to be heading. So I'm trying to, trying to keep up. Maybe they'll do something to make it more like a, a grainy texture on there I, or something. Well, I mean, they're, get, they're, like they're definitely getting better brushes and things. Like, there's True Grit, texture, uh, Retro Supply, True Grit. Like, there's people coming out yeah. with stuff now. Um, it's just a matter of me sitting down and being like, all right, you learned how to do it on the 
piece of paper with a brush pen. Now do it digitally. Oh, do we have back there? You got it. Your cat find you? Oh yeah, that's. A, I have three cats. It's like a king. Oh, nice. <laughs> oh, <fantastic. laughs> uh, There's one outside that's like Mrow! right now trying to get in. <laughs> it's like, it's oh, dinner I love time, dude. It. <laughs> I love it. Well, John Lee, I think we pretty much answered them. I know I got my yeah. three out. Um, I yeah, wonder I mean, if you want to hop back in and see if there's anything we need to do to wrap up. But this has been fun. Yeah, definitely. This is a blast. Other thoughts? Good? That was fantastic. I really enjoyed listening to you go back and forth. Awesome. I love how passionate you both are about your respective um, work and you both have a lot of fun, it seems, with um, what you do, too. And you're in you coordinate colors. Oh. <laughs> I, I think that was what me and you kind of hooked up, what kind of made us start thinking, like, is like, you know, we both seem to be happy people. Like, the whole time, we, you, were, you were there by yourself when we first met and just yeah. had the biggest smile on your face walking around. Oh, yeah. I was well, like, this yeah. dude's approachable as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. yeah, well, Heather, if you didn't know this, uh, yeah, so that was my first creative conference, WMC Fest last year, 2017. Uh, yeah, and so I'd never really been to one. I'd very much felt like, uh, you know, an island of one. And the first group of guys I met was um, Kevin Green and some of the guys from the East Coast. Uh -huh. and, and then that was at the happy hour. And then the next, they kind of went back to their hostel or the hotel or whatever. And so I was at that mixer just being like, well, who the hell do I talk to now? I saw a different group of guys. There was John Lee, there was Edgar. And I think, I think you were there for that, John Lee, or were you? Yeah, it was like, and Alfredo was there too. I and think. Alfred, yep, yep. And so, and so I just walked up to that group and they're like, yeah, we're from, you know, most of them were from the West Coast. And I was just like, all right, well, this guy from the Midwest is hitting every, uh, you know, demographic right now. So, um, yeah. And just from there, I was just pretty much had the best time just being like, these are some of my people. Like in Kalamazoo, you feel like you get a good sense of it. So just kudos to you for all the work you've put in to make those events happen. And I know you guys are doing something different this year. And I has that happened yet or is that still ongoing? It's happening October 5th. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And so, yeah, I hope you guys continue to kind of find ways to connect creative people. Even stuff like this is awesome. John Lee and I haven't had a chance to catch up really probably since the conference in great detail. So this has been a lot of fun. Well, Back and forth on Facebook some, but that's it. Really. Yeah. 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 Well, thank you so much for your time and I'll, um, I'll work on getting this together and posting it very soon. So I'll keep you updated. All right. Yeah, thank you, you so much. From us, let me know. Oh, yeah, definitely. Feel free to reach out. Cool. Thanks, guys. All right. Thank, Thank you, everyone. You. Have a good day. Bye. Bye.